Hello, and welcome back to the fanfiction audiobook. Now, I haven't been doing this podcast for very long, so it seems a little bit early to get into themes, but the thing is, it's spooky season, and that's my favorite time of year. So, of course, there has to be some Halloween-related stories. So, for this episode, I'm going to be reading a story called Halloween on the Enterprise. It's a Star Trek The Next Generation story. It's pretty tame, except for some fake blood and insinuated fake violence for haunted house, etc. It's a Gen story. So, without further ado, let's get spooky. There was something different about the Enterprise. It was hard to pin down, but it was definitely there. There were more children roaming the halls, accompanied by parents and friends as they loudly expressed their excitement. Things were more orange. And black. And decrepit? Artificial cobwebs hung from the ceiling, and temporary peel-off decals of cracks and holes were on the walls, put there by officers and civilians alike, both of whom protested loudly at their removal. An entire deck had been commandeered, only authorized personnel allowed, though how that was decided was a mystery, as the personnel seemed to include anyone from navigation engineers to civilian grandmothers. Certainly it was strange, but it didn't interfere with any of the vital operations of the ship, and what the crew did while off-duty was no one's business but theirs. It was only when Geordi Laforge placed a box of miscellaneous decorations, among them bats, spiders, and oddly colored triples, into Data's arms that he decided to ask, "'What are these for?' he asked, taking his friend's amused expression to mean he had missed something obvious again. Should he have asked sooner? He was trying to use context clues, but they had clearly failed him. Why, Data, LaForge began with a smile, it's October. Yes, I am aware. I fail to see how that would inspire such a collective need to redecorate. October, Data, LaForge repeated, as though stressing the word would imbue it with new meaning, odd considering English was not a tonal language. That means Halloween. Ah, Data nodded, smiling to express his understanding. Yes, I have heard of it. He looked at the box of rubber animals in his arms. But... Do these have to do with keeping the spirits of the dead at bay? Oh, Data. LaForge placed a hand on the android's shoulder, shaking his head with the fond exasperation only he seemed to inspire. Surely your databanks have more information than that. It's been hundreds of years since that was the only meaning. Halloween is a celebration of childhood innocence, a chance to engage in mischief and trickery and be praised for it, a day where they can eat sweets and hang out with friends and dress up in wild costumes. It's fun, Data, pure, childlike fun. Data stood expressionless in the face of LaForge's impassioned speech, taking in the decorations on the walls and hanging from the ceiling as he considered his friend's words. So we are enabling this fun. Exactly. LaForge pulled a bat on a string from the box in Data's arms. It's our job as adults to make sure the children have as much fun as possible, and are as safe as possible while they have it. But aren't these animals considered scary in most human cultures? Do human children enjoy being scared? His human friend smiled even wider as he climbed the stepladder to hang the bat from the ceiling, but he wasn't the one who answered. I remember being the scarer as a kid, Commander William Riker said as he walked past, a box of his own in his arms. It was my favorite part, after all the candy, of course. I see, Data said, quirking his head as he considered that information. So scaring would be part of the mischief, then. Some of it, Riker replied, leaning against the wall. Most of it is empty threats, really. Just an excuse to extort candy from innocent homeowners. The costume was always my favorite part. LaForge struck a pose from his place on the stepladder. I made a picture-perfect Zephram Cochran. Have you heard about the captain's costume? It's going to be a sight to see. The captain is participating? Both humans laughed. (laughs) Data, LaForge said in that way only he had. We're all participating. What do you think we're doing? That certainly explained a few things. So, are we required to wear costumes? I confess I am unsure of what to wear, if so. You don't have to, Riker assured him. But it would be interesting to see what you come up with if you do. You know, Data, LaForge began, finally stepping off the ladder. The haunted house on Deck 12 could use some help if you're interested. They were talking about integrating holodeck technology, but the equipment is too heavy for it to be practical. With your help, I'm sure it would be much easier. A haunted house? Do children enjoy those? Some do, Riker said with a shake of his head, and even more will pretend they do. It's more for the adults, really. A reward for all the work we've put into everything else. Interesting. I see. I think I will offer them my services. It will be an interesting experience, if nothing else. 
Captain Jean-Luc Picard rolled through the halls in his replica wheelchair. Once, such chairs were common in human society, but with the advent of regenerative technologies and the advancement of medical care in general, they had long ago become obsolete. He sat in one now, however, as part of his Halloween costume. It was a somewhat obscure reference, he knew, but the few wide-eyed stares and squeals of joyous recognition told him he wasn't completely out of touch. Dr. Crusher had been kind enough to pair her costume with his, taking up the mantle of another red-haired doctor as she accompanied him down to the lower decks. It was nice to be among his charges, even for a day. Too often his duties kept him confined to his office or the bridge, the demands of his position preventing him from interacting with the hundreds of families under his care. It was a travesty, really. Perhaps that sense of disconnection was what had him throwing himself headlong into holidays like Halloween and other species' celebrations. "'Ah, Captain,' Lieutenant Commander LaForge said when he noticed them. His wolfman costume made interesting use of his visor. Bits of fur stuck to the metal using visible globs of glue. "'Are you here for the haunted house?' "'Ah, we are indeed,' he replied with a smile. "'How is it? I understand a great deal of effort went into it this year.' Oh, it's something, Captain. LaForge looked a little sheepish, the mechanical ears of his costume wilting as though he were an actual canine. I might have suggested Lieutenant Data get involved, sir. I thought it would be a good chance for him to learn about the holiday and for the people to get to know him, but he seems to have gotten a bit carried away. Before Picard could ask what he meant by that, a group of people approached the elevator. The children were crying, their tears leaving tracks in their makeup. One child, ironically dressed as the android officer himself, was staring straight ahead, eyes unseeing as he was guided past by a put-upon adult. "'I see,' he said drolly. "'I do hope this won't be a repeat of the April Fool's affair,' LaForge winced. "'Me too, Captain.' Booming laughter signaled the arrival of the Enterprise's resident Klingons, the father and son wearing matching cowboy costumes. "'That was amazing,' young Alexander was saying, looking up at his father with wide, excited eyes. "'We should do it again!' Agreed, Worf said with a small smile, placing a large hand on his child's shoulder. If I had known it would be so invigorating, I would have brought you here sooner. Haunted houses were nowhere near this fun when I was a child. Captain Picard watched them through the imposing artificial gateway, which marked the entrance to the event, fog billowing out into the hallway behind them. Do I want to know what has them so entertained? LaForge looked as though he would answer, but Picard had to brace himself as his chair moved forward without his prompting. "'Come on, Captain,' Dr. Crusher said, leaning over his shoulder as she pushed him into the mist. "'Now we have to see what's inside.' "'I don't think this is a good idea,' he began in protest, trying and failing to stand as the chair kept moving. "'Where's your sense of adventure?' she crooned, taking obvious delight at his upset." He was tempted to retort rather smartly about leaving it in his uniform, but, but the words, indeed the capacity for words, left him as they rounded a corner. There, on a raised dais of sorts, was Data. Data's head, that is. Oh, hello, Captain, the dismembered android said cheerily, clearly unbothered by the puddle of fake blood pooling out from beneath his neck. I wasn't expecting you. Data. Picard wilted in his chair hiding his face behind his hand. Do I want to know what you're doing? I'm scaring the children. Is that not the purpose of a haunted house? The bluster that had risen in Picard left him in a single sigh. He wasn't wrong, technically. Carry on, then, when this is over, he said to Dr. Crusher, as she rolled him past the unsettling sight. I want to know who suggested that. That was Halloween on the Enterprise by Jesse LaRue. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to suggest fan fictions to be read on this podcast, you can send an email to thefanfictionaudiobook at yahoo.com. It is singular, not plural. Thanks for listening, and I hope you have a very spooky October.